In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Mifair Ultralight EV1 tag. These are some of the features of uh, this tag. I have already made a few videos about this tag and which are available in YouTube. And this tag is a successor of the Mifair Ultralight, which I have already made a video or you have to see my my previous videos on this so like Mifer ultralight tag this has got the static locking the OTP the user memory and these three were also present in the Mifer ultralight all the remaining things here these are new or the features of this tag so first time we are going to see how the tags are password protected counters we have already seen the counters when I made a video on NTAC 203 we are going to see about the configuration pages in any tag where you come across the password protection you will more or less find this uh, configuration pages as well we are going to see that and there's something something very new in this uh, tag is the feature to do the originality check so which we are going to see in a moment if you go to YouTube and look for the Mifair Ultralight EV1 and you will come across many videos and but these are uh, my videos which you can find in that in the title the finite pi videos I have made three videos here which are 11 minutes each so you can spend um, your useful 35 minutes uh, in these three videos I will not be covering uh, the details about this tag which I have already covered in these three videos so please you know see these three videos and after this you know you can start this new video we are also going to see all the various or the new commands of this tag I'm not going to cover all the commands which have which have already uh, covered in my Mifer ultralight videos these are the new commands available in the stack because there is a counter obviously you must have commands to read and the right counter you're going to see the command for password authentication and there's a command for read signature and command called the get the version information and the fast read the tearing event and finally the VCSL so before you start working with this tag I would advise you to get a copy of this document and you can download this from a next website or you'll also find this on internet and this this document you know it's uh, it's uh, very easy to understand so I will be using this document when I start showing you how the various uh, command works so Mifair ultralight EV1 comes in uh, two variants the one which I'm going to use is called the MF OUL11 so the other variant is uh, the one that ends with 2.1 the difference between these two is the, the amount of user memory the tag has got so I somehow could not get hold of uh, this higher memory tags um, however the good news is these tags are uh, easily available to buy from internet so this is the tag and this is the memory structure of the tag we are going to discuss and as you can see here the first 16 pages are identical to if you look at this is identical to the Mifair ultralight tag so I'm not going to cover this part of the document so we're going to focus more on the remaining features that speaks about the configuration and the password and uh, about the password and the counters 
So just to have a brief look at the, the higher memory tags, in my videos on NTAC 203, we have already seen how the dynamic uh, lock works because there are more memory than uh, you can lock with this uh, static locks. Obviously, in order to lock this uh, additional or extra memory, so there is a lock that is called as the dynamic lock. And if you have understood the intact 203, and I'm 100% sure there's no difference between uh, this dynamic lock concept and the one in intact uh, 203. So this is the software we have been using in all my previous videos. I've connected my uh, my discovery board based on CR95HF and I'm going to place a new Mifair Ultralight EV1 tag. So the first thing we do is you know, connect the board and choose this entry called Mifair Ultralight EV1. And this screen is more or less identical to the, our previous videos. So first thing is activate because this is a, a ISO 1443 type A tax. The activation is identical to the previous tax and you can see all the commands that are going from the software to this uh, board. And the first thing we do is read the content of entire card into the software. Now you can see the page number from 0 to 19. After this I got three pages which I have not shown the page number. This is just to keep you know this diagram uh, similar to what you see in the document. So this chip or this tag has got three counters which I have shown here as a counter 0, 1 and 2. Now I am not going to speak anything from the page 0 to page 16, uh, page 15 because it is already covered in my previous videos. We've got two pages for configuration called configuration zero and config one. We got one page that is, you know, keep in mind one page has got or each page has got four bytes. We've got 32 bit for the password and we got a pack. It is just, you know, the first two bytes are used for the pack and, and the counter. And I've got some new uh, tabs here. So one is for the user user data which I have seen. I got counters here and the locks. And under this you got one more section called VCSL cell command. We got the ECC and the and the signature here. You got the configuration and password tab here. And this okay we have seen before. So let us go through the simplest command. So I'm going to show you what this command called get version does. So this command will return you 8 bytes of data and when these 8 bytes are decoded, you get this information. So basically here, you can differentiate between the types of the tags. Uh, because we are using the tag which is uh, L11, you can see that you know you got this uh, the following things. You got the vendor ID 04, and we'll be more interested in the storage size. So if you come across a tag that shows 0E, it means you know that's a 21 type of tag with more memory. Otherwise, you know it is uh, the 0B. So we can use this get version command to identify. Uh, what type of uh, tag it is and this command you'll also come across in other tags like ntag213 or the desk file etc. So the command is uh, pretty straightforward here you have to send the command 60 and followed by CRC you know we know that the CRC thing is handled by the CR95 chip chip. So let us see how this is uh, done in the software. So if you go into this version tab and let me clear this uh, this command section. So if you hit get version, what I have done is if you see here we are sending 6028 and by this time you know we already know what is uh, 28 stands for. So this basically tells that you know uh, to compute CRC and 
the last byte you know is a 8 bit uh, data and this is what you get as a output let's go through this uh, quickly 80 is the success code followed by 0d it is the 13 bytes of uh, data and out of which you know we are interested in only the 8 bytes because this is followed by the CRC as well as you know the 3 bytes of control so when you decode this byte you'll end up getting this structure so that is all about you know the version data the next easiest command which you are going to see is called the read signature in the documentation it's explained that we can use this the output of this command to check whether the tag is the the original tag manufactured by NXP or whether it's a clone I've not heard anything about clone so far and whether it is an emulator so these days you know the emulators are becoming popular and so using this signature I myself you know I have not have not used this feature at all so NSP speaks about uh, some kind of a, a service where we can pass this you know the output of this command and check uh, if it is uh, valid or not so this command is very straightforward as well you have to pass 3c followed by 00 and what you get is a 32 bytes of the ECC signature so let's see how it is done here so if you hit this get ECC this is the output you see in the back end you can see that uh, 3c00 is passed and you get this uh, 32 bytes so if you know how to uh, call that feature probably you know that could be under the control of an NDA and so if you are implementing a system based on uh, this Mifer Ultra like EV1 tax it is always uh, advisable to verify uh, this signature so next we are going to see the counters this particular tag has got uh, three counters again you know what we do with these counters is all up to our design of the, designing the software and these counters are one way counters you can only increment and you can add a number of any size if you remember when we discussed the counter in NTAG 203 the, the increment was uh, possible from a number with 0 to 15 so that was only the 15 uh, the first command we are going to see is called as a read counter and it's very well explained here when this command is sent so because you know there are three counters this command code is 39 followed by any number from 00, 0 to uh, 0 to so what you get as a response is a 3 byte or a 24 bit number so we're going to see this first after that there's a command to increment the counter so here also you have to first uh, specify what counter we are going to increment and you you have to pass the the 24 bit number as well so we're going to see that you have to pass all the four bytes but only the last the last byte is ignored the only the first three uh, least bytes are used so here you know the the counters are available in the user data so I got three tabs here so as you can see here the counter values are shown as zeros so that's the default value of the counter so I'm going to increment this first counter say by value uh, 100 so let me okay the, the commands are not too too much there so write and immediately you know what I have done here is so I'm sending this command to increment the counter and this is the command and the response here is just say acknowledge is which is uh, the 0a and immediately after that I'm also sending a command to read the counter value so that you know you know probably you know writing a counter and reading you know which is a very common uh, practice so while reading you can check whether the write is successful so so what I've done is you know whatever output I get from the read 
I am just populating this uh, this grid here. So likewise, you can increment by anything. Let's let's go with the the next counter, and we can start this counter. Assume that I want this counter to have initial value of ten thousand. So write it. So here also keep in mind the first byte is the least significant byte followed by the next higher byte. So let's take one more number which is uh, uh, more than 16 bit probably we'll write uh, say 500,000 right. So I have got uh, all the three counters with some initial value. Now you can read this count anytime. So let's see what you know I've done if I close this and restart again, activate the read. So here what I've done is during this read operation, if you if you go through these uh, commands, I'm also reading the values of all the three counters. So because of that, I'm able to populate the initial values of uh, these counters. So again, the counter is a you know it's a very simple uh, operation here. We just have to um, you can keep in mind you can write any value as long as okay it is it is you know less than uh, the 24 bits. Let us try to increment this with a huge number and see what's going to happen. Right, so still you are able to get it. Probably now to find out eventually a number that is more than. So it's still there. So keep on. Okay. Now here, when we try to add this number, I got an error message because internally what the tag does is it will always check if the current value and, and added with the new value if it is more than 24 bit number you get an error message so let us see how the error is error response return so here the error is 0 4 and I think the documentation says you know 0 4 is a, a negative acknowledgement so what we just saw is you, know, you cannot have a counter value which is more than uh, 24 uh, bits. So because there is an error here, now if you if you look at this uh, documentation, I don't know if I have discussed this in my previous videos. If you go to this uh, the block diagram here, so it says somewhere here it says. Uh, the command interpreter returns to the ideal state on receipt of an unexpected command. So this is exactly what has happened. So when we activate the card, we were here. So this was the current state. So we tried to increment the counter and that resulted in a failure. So it will go back either to here or probably it will go back to the ideal state. So I got here in a documentation here, I think it always goes back to the halt. So next I'm going to show you what is this uh, fast read command is. This command allows you to read any number of pages in one single read operation. So I assume that you know I want to read or we know that every read command of this uh, tag can read four pages. And if I want to read say 16 pages I have to issue the read command four times. So if you know one of the best example is when we when you use this as a NFC tag so you will end up reading the entire uh, tag data into the memory. So this is some kind of a, a you know like a, a faster way of reading the entire tag. So here this command takes the start address and the end address page and this will return you all the data from starting address start page to end page you have to keep in mind the number of bytes you can read depends on uh, so many factors like your reader writer memory and and you know say i have used this tag in the pn532 where i can read more bytes compared to uh, this particular uh, cr95hf so again the command also very straightforward you just have to send 3a followed by start page and page and that is how that is done here. Now if you let's go 
let us try to do that you know in a, in a normal way if I click on read off sorry I did not activate that so read so here what you can see is you know I have read uh, the page 0 page 4 page 8 page 12 page 16 so, so we have to send so many read commands and you know that each read command takes certain amount of time to execute so the quickest way to read this data is you know let's let's try from from the beginning so I'm going to activate just clear this if you put a tick so this is to tell the software that to use the fast read command so now if I hit read tag so as you can see here so I'm reading a uh, 14 pages at a time because you know I just found there is some limitation not not able to remember where I have read that in the documentation looks like the CR uh, this 95 HF chipset has got a buffer of 64 bytes and I've been reading you know trying to read I'm able to read in a maximum of 14 pages at a time so here I'm reading page number 0 to page number 13 so you got lots of data here which is decoded and after that I'm reading from 14 to 19 and you got you know the remaining pages so it just you know two read command you're able to read the entire tag however keep in mind reading the values of the counters are done using separate commands so unlike the entire you know 203 where uh, in my previous videos where the counter was also read as part of the a read page command so this is this is different so eventually you know the effect is the same we just read everything you know uh, all these uh, pages you know we have read